Hello, my name is Stéphane Labrie, and today we're going to have a look at uh, what we call, uh, among us, the Connected Conform Workflow. Uh, 2016 Extension 1, uh, many people were asking us, you know, in past, we've done a lot, a lot of research about Conform and how to make easier, you know, working with multiple sequences where you have multiple deliverables, so working in, you know, post-production of advertising, well, you know what I'm talking about. You get 30 seconds, 50, 55, all version, different markets. You have, sometimes they look all the same, they are cut down, sometimes they are not really cut downs, but, you know, new editorial, so you don't, you don't know what you're going to work with. So, we spend a lot of time researching with different type of users to see, well, what could be the subset of functionality we would need to bring in the application to, you know, correctly, you know, uh, address these, uh, these workflows and these challenges. So we'll have a look in the application. So I am in 2016 extension one, and I'm going to go into the conform view. Uh, it's really a collection, like when I'm talking about the connected conform workflow, it's really a collection of functionalities uh, across the application that will hopefully, you know, uh, help you make uh, your life easier with these uh, projects. Uh, so let's I'm going to load some EDLs. Not everybody you know, is on AF or XML from Final Cut Pro, so we're going to load, load some EDLs. And starting from Media Hub, you're going to see some improvement on the user interface side. So what we've done for EDL, we've provided an automatic detection of sequence, meaning that if you get multiple EDLs, you know, with the file naming convention, well, automatically we're going to detect the name pattern and we're going to create sequences for you. Well, so you don't have to think about which one you need to choose and which one needs to be part of a given sequence. So as a user, you would name the EDL appropriately before? Absolutely. Before. Of course, that might not be the case as our research showed that people in the tutorial, you know, they know that they need to correctly name V1, V2, V3. But even if it's not the case, well, we also added a, 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 a custom grouping. So that means that if you load these and you go inside the, and, and you import them, well, you're going to get a panel like this one where you can define the name of the sequence and on which track it should, you know, land when you conform the sequence. And of course, you see all the event, the number of events per EDL. That could be very handy, but most of the time, you know, we've seen that uh, going with the automatic detection, you know, makes uh, perfect sense. And uh, but of course, you have options. It's flame, right? So you can do things in different ways depending of your deliverable workflows and so on. So let's import these sequences. Second thing you'll see, and as you remember, in 2015, 2016, we've had it, you know, uh, real groups. So we take advantage of this organization on your desktop. So what we're, we've done in extension one is we've connected the real group uh, methodology with conform, meaning that. When you're going to import content, we're going to create a reel, a special reel that we call the sequences reel, inside which we're going to create the sequences. So as you, if you remember in the current version, 2015 or 16, depending what you use, well, depending of your last uh, selected uh, location on your desktop or in your media library, well, the sequences would have been, you know, created there. But sometimes when you work with a lot of content, so you can be confused, where are these things? Well, right now, you can create multiple a real group and the, cu the currently selected real group will be the place that you're going to work with your conform. Uh, so I created these sequences. Automatically they get open so I can easily look at my three deliverable here, my 15, my 20 and my 30 second conform. Three layers, that's great. So the, the, the first addition you'll see uh, in this environment is the ability to group or to detect the source media you want to work with. So we've had it in conform on the left side, the creation of the source sequence. And a source sequence, if you had the pleasure to work with EDL in the past and online base, well, it's a C sort EDL that is created. It's a sequence that contains all the sources that you need for your conform sequence. So you don't have to manually look at your EDL, your XML, and then try to come up with a sequence that is required for conform. So that's the first thing we've done. The creation of this sequence that you might use, you know, in some workflows where you want maybe to publish out content that could be very useful in some workflows, allows to create a connectivity between the sources, something you never had in Flame, meaning that if you modify one of these segments that are, in fact, uh, a source, well, you can, you can share the modification. And we'll see it right now when I'm going to go and conform it. Again, that's something you guys very often do is you get in EDL, the tape name of given event were wrong and the media files that has this metadata is wrong. So then, of course, you're not going to link. So let's say I just changed the tape name of this event. 
that in this source sequence is in fact a piece of media, while the modification is now reflected in all my sequences. As you can see, all the events sharing the same media files now contain that thing. Of course, that kind of operation, you know, can be undone by using the undo key. So now I'm back on the same structure I got with my conform. That's great. So now I'm ready to uh, aggregate the content inside the application. So first, uh, since I didn't use an AF or an XML, where you would find metadata, path, and file name, well, I'm using EDL. So I can define match criteria. And something else we've added in extension one is the ability to have this panel that you know, doesn't require to be open, close, open, close. So you can define your different uh, criteria and then search for the media. Since I'm using EDL, I'm going to use source time code and tape name. And by the way, these these settings uh, are also saved. So on uh, a project basis, you could define all these presets. So you don't have to do them, you know, and uh, redo them all the time. They're going to be there when you're going to need them. So I'm just going to use a search location. And I have some media files here. So I'm just going to go into my original camera data. And back to the source sequence. These are matched based on time-coded tape name. And I'm going to link the sources. Of course, since I'm working with multiple sequences within this real group, well, everything, all sequences got linked at the same time. So that's great. Again, I'm working with two sequences here, but I've seen projects where we have, you know, 59 deliverables. Right. You don't want to do that 59 times. So one time, and then you're saving time and spend more time in the application doing magic. So that's part of the source attribute. Something else, because you might need to define uh, more or less you know, footage you want to ingest. Here, my files are not that long, but when you work with RED, sometimes the camera starts but never ends, right? You have five hours of footage for some takes, and you're stuck if you want to use caching or you want to use proxies. So something we've added is the limit handle capabilities. That means that when you ingest the media, well, you can define, let's say, some frames as being the head and tails or the handles you want to, want to use in your project. Something that you can also do within the, this group of sequences is, well, I'm going to unlink this segment and I'm going to just limit the media. So I'm just going to press uh, this thing, media, unlink. And since the property of this segment is shared across all the sequences, well, all the occurrences, you know, as you can see, I have twice the user shot here and I can go back for that one. I can then define the limit handle. And since we know the media location, well, it's, it's easy to just link back the source and everything is good. Everything is now linked in almost all my sequences. So uh, the joy of a last minute demonstration. So it should have done that correctly, but in fact, we'll fix it in post. <laughs> Uh, so that means that even if you consolidate media when you ingest your sequences and your media files, well, you can change your mind and then deselect limit handle and reconnect this segment to the original piece of media and then you have enough handles to play with in the application. That's great. Same thing as far as sharing metadata for the pre-processing option. You remember when you work with Red and Ari, you have all these metadata setting in the, in the media hub, right? Or you can find them back in the pre-processing. Here I'm working with QuickTime files. So let's go in the RGB lot. Or if I had red or ARRI, well, in, the, in this panel, I would find all the media option. So I can, from the pre-processing option, you know, define, define uh, color management, lockup tables, color transform. So let's say, let's say I use this color transformation. Uh, if I activate that thing, well, that's cool. I get this nice look from a color transformer, or that could be a lot. Uh, this pre-processing option is a, a, source look, a source side effect, right? And if I move to my sequences, well, I'll see that all my segments sharing the same footage are affected. So it doesn't matter in which sequence you actually make that change. It doesn't you matter, don't have to exactly. Do it in the original. No, in fact, yeah, you, you could use the original, or you could use the source sequence, or any deliverable that you have to work with. Of course, it can be undone easily, and then it... Uh, it reflects in all the sequences part of this group. And if you wanted to undo it only in one versus the other? OK, that's a very good question. So I'll just redo the operation. So let's go back to this color managed thing. So this transformation is done on the source side, like I said, and it's shared across all occurrences of this, of this uh, sources. Uh, we've added an option. We've added an option here to duplicate the source. 
be careful that that option doesn't mean that you're going to duplicate media on your storage. It only means that I'm going to isolate modification to this occurrence. So that means I'm detaching from the group of uh, segments sharing the same source the changes. So if I decide to go back inside the preprocessing option and disable the color transformation, well, that changes that change won't affect the other sequence. So again, you have option, and one of the option used with this uh, ability is when you want to unlink relink content. Let's say you get graded content, but you still want to keep the original media for a version inside your sequence. Well, you can do that. You can disconnect these, uh, these sources with all the segment referencing them later. So I'm just going to remove the color transformation and removing my duplication of source. So now everything is set as uh, I've done when I conform. I'm happy with my conform sequences. And uh, the next step, I guess, would be to start working creatively in the application. Uh, something that we've added in the conform view is the ability to, just like we've done for the source sequence, where we, we've done an analysis of all the sequences, we look at the media files we need, we let you define handles to ingest the media that you need. Well, we also have a mechanism that will create what we call a shot sequence. A shot sequence is I'm going to look at all the sequences. I'm going to find the matching shots in the story order. So the source sequences, the source sequence is in fact a C mode sort from file name, tape name, time code, ascending time code, right? In this context, what I want to see is all the content I'm going to work with in the story order. Here I have my three layer effects that are, you know, foreground, blue screen, and background. And here I have my other shot in my sequence. When I create my shot sequence, and as you can see, I have another sequence part of my group, this sequence creates a shared segment, meaning that effects applied on segment could be, synchron could be used to synchronize other sequences. So in this case, I have a time warp in the, uh, on, this, uh, on this segment. If I right click, we've added the navigation capability. So if you see the shared segments here, I can see in which sequence, which sequences this uh, time warp or end the shot is uh, located. So I can use that to navigate. And of course, I can see the content uh, in the other sequence. Any modification that I would do to this effect. So let's go to the time warp. So let's add some trail, just because everybody likes trail these days. Like that. Well, that's cool. If I look at my 20 second version, well, of course, nothing was changed. But nothing prevents me to go back on the one that has trail and right click on the segment and sync the shared segments. And by doing so, as you have seen in, uh, in this part of the interface, well, we told you that we perform a replace on three segment and three clips, meaning that, well, if I use my navigation tool here to go to my, let's say, 30 second, well, I'm going to find the same time warp with the same effects. So again, like I said earlier, well, I'm working with three sequences. Let's say you work with 60 sequences. Well, you don't want to do that every time. And that applies to any timeline effect and even BFX. So you could be, you know, color correcting these, right click. And as you can see here, there's a, a chain icon, right? That chain icon means well, uh, these are shared segments and they are relationship in other sequences of your group. So you can do these things. So sharing uh, FX modification, removing effects, even sharing renders, because if you want to render these and you right click and you synchronize the other ones, well, you'll find the right renders in other sequences. So again, it goes into the how can I not spend time on manually updating my sequences. And as we know, editorial are quite good at providing EDLs, AF, XML, even when you are in the middle of your project. So that kind of functionality should make you work faster, easily keep up with what they're doing in editorial, and then be able to deliver previews of the work you are doing. So that, that, that's covering the conform aspect of this multiple sequence conform. Of course, we know that when these sequences are conform, well, you are probably ready to continue when you work in a work group as distributing the content for other, you know, flare, flame assist, or even other flame system in your facility. So as you might remember in 2015 extension 2, we've added capabilities of token and naming convention uh, to and I'm going to just go into my, yeah, into my shot sequence. Shot sequence, by the way, is a great sequence to use when you want to distribute content because 
And again, that was another request. So the request in the past was, can you create a tool that will allow me to know what is the maximum amount of media I need to work with for a given shot? Well, the shot sequences that does that. After the analysis of all the sequences used in this group, well, you can see that this shot is the longest usage of media that is that you can find in all your uh, deliverable sequence. So from this sequence, well, you probably want to do your naming convention. And something we've added in extension one, if we go in uh, the preferences for timeline, is we've added uh, the default shape, uh, shot name. So I'm just going to create, well, FX, I'm just going to name my FX underscore, and I'm going to use a new token that is the background index. The index that is part of the the list of token, well, counts the, the shot. So shot one, shot two, shot three. But of course, when I come in this area where I have a multi-track effect, well, I don't want to have shot number 15 for the back plate and shot number one for the foreground elements. So what's going to happen when I'm going to rename now that I'm using, now that I'm, I'm just going to rename shot, yeah, and now that I'm using this default background segment, well, everything will be correctly named. And if we go and conform, as we know, there's a nice column with the shot name, and if I sort, well, my FX9 contains my foreground and my background element. So again, uh, you had to do it manually in previous releases. Well, now it's automatic, it's easy and fun, and you can see the result in conform. So I provided name con naming convention to my sequences. Of course, you might ask, well, what's going to happen with my deliverables? Well, if you go to the 30 second version, you are also going to find back the right naming convention with the right, you know, naming on the right shot, correspondence. So everything is there. Uh, let's go back to shot sequence. The reason why you do a naming convention is probably because you want to publish out or you want to create batch groups. So the publish functionality introduced in extension two of 2015 is the same. So you're gonna be able to publish out, get with shotgun or you know, directly to the file system. You're gonna get all your shots with the naming convention based on the presets you're gonna use. Uh, and, and that's cool. Uh, it provides a workflow where you can work with third-party application, you know, outside the flame and then get some renders back, you know, with the ability to have versioning with the open clip methodology uh, that we produce when you do a publish. Something we've added in this extension is the ability to, this, this, the ability to do a kind of publish but internally to the application. And this is something you find also in the conform in the conform view. It's the create batch group. So based on the naming convention and on the selection of content. So I'm just gonna create, select these. And based on their naming convention, we're gonna create badge group at the destination that you want. It could be on the desktop, on your library, or your shared library, or you can even manually select a location. So I'm just gonna create, I'm just gonna create, well, yeah, let's, uh, let's create a folder here. Or a library, why not? So VFX. And that's going to be my pick destination. So I'm going to press the create batch group. I'm going to use this. And automatically, what happened is I get one batch per stack of effect. So again, you had to manually recreate them in past releases. So now all the batches and all the content required and all the definition of the render node is automatically done for you. So using the backplate time code, tape name, naming convention to populate the render node and batch is already done for you. So nothing, no need to do 55 times T-click on the render node, Very it's nice. there for you. But also, as you might have seen, Eagle Eye, the sequence I'm working with here, a new version track was added. And this version track, if I go in the timeline tab, is the, the, the destination of the batch output. And as you can see here, we do have the link mechanism. So what does it mean? It means that my shot sequence, well, shows the show, shows the back clip of all the setups for, from batch and all my deliverables also got the synchronization with the right media span of each batch setup meaning that you're going to be able to load these well on your station or using flare on a distributed workflow uh, in a work group do your visual effects and using a tool that we call uh, replace on shared segment you're going to be able to replace once and then get the repercussion of your change in all your sequences. Oh. So as you can see, from conform to the distribution of the work to a group and then the final approval in Flame, I think extension one should uh, 
probably make these workflows at some time, uh, some time they are very you know complex, and it should be you know s more simple to use, and you would spend more time you know in batch and in the creative tool set instead of having to swap shot you know like crazy and spending much more time managing that, which exactly an extraordinary uh, amount of time doing absolutely. That. Again, three sequences is easy, but as we know, you know it's uh, very easy to get tons of deliverables to produce. Well, thanks so much for taking time to show us. It Thank you very great. much, and I hope you guys will have fun with Extension 1.